Un poquito de español. Right. Sometimes. That's it because we just began with your little bit of Spanish. Yeah, because I write everything in Spanish. But right. Reading each of the questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, profound and essential change, the change of mental conditions, which is. One way of approaching an understanding of my mental conditions is to reflect on the principal direction of my existence. It's like asking what are the things that most interest me and to which I dedicate the most energy. I can also delve into this theme by observing my mental habits, that is, seeing what things I am most psychologically and physically occupied with. So, profound and essential. An essential change, the change of mental conditions is possible through an intention of human consciousness. First question is, what do I understand going to it by profound and essential change? Want to say something, Saul, first? Sure. Okay, good. Um, well, for me, um, I think I have um, <coughs> a personal touch of intuition and also experience, uh -huh. you know. Um, what I understand, um, combining those two elements, is um, if I can manage my consciousness of myself, you know, more permanent, you know. Um, um, to have access to the profound um, with intention, I mean voluntarily. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, that's I understand for a profound change. Go, go there with intention, you know, uh -huh. without illusion, without, you know, compulsions. Mm -hmm. So. I was um, <clears throat> I was struck by um, me that I was posturing when I answered, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know what else to do. I really didn't know what else to do. But what I, my answers, I found I found them to be scholastic. That kind of, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I mean by posturing. That, you know, I'm like. Well, I just repeat what I know from the doctrine. That's right. how I. I have the same experience. That's how I can answer the questions, right? right? But the problem I have is that that <laughs> doesn't quite do it for me. I mean, it doesn't. It's not as clear as what you said. Anyway, yeah, but uh, anyway, you have a, a some kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Not only you read them for a year or. or yeah. You being experienced, I uh, mean, yes, right, a small portion, a big portion of mm -hmm. all those uh, understanding. Right. So the pro the problem is, of course, then that I incorporate what the mm -hmm. doctrine, yeah. and then I spit it out again. Anyway, I said um, it seems to me that to understand and intuit profound changes to. Uh, that it it seems to me that it deals with the with dispossession, with letting go of the known and going towards the unknown. Only out of a profound emptiness, a void within a void, does the door to the profound and essential change open. So that again? Only out of uh, profound emptiness. Yeah. It's like it's pretty clear to me that the intellect gets in the way right away. And that so you have to, 
like the Zen people talk about having a don't know mind. That, it, that your mind, that you clear your mind up so that you don't walk around knowing stuff. You walk around open. You're open to the world. You're open and you don't, by not knowing, you're not imposing judgments. Yeah, but uh, you must have a, a direction. Or, I mean, yeah, even right. if it's cooperation. Right, well, that's another option. Right, there's, right. You have yeah, because if you go and you don't know where without right. possession or something, you can arrive anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Gotta be uh, something on the back, you know, pushing right. you the purpose. Uh -huh. or, right. Or well, you have an intention. Right, it's a, you have to have an intention to go towards this profound emptiness. And to go towards a void within a void, emptiness within emptiness. Because it's, because of the nature of the consciousness, we don't get to go direct towards things. We have to go around. We have to persuade contents rather than forcing them. Mm -hmm. And the same way with, with approaching change, it seems to me that, that we, have to be, we have to be gentle with ourselves. If we're not gentle with ourselves, we are creating the wrong kind of change right away. There's already, there's already a forcing, there's already a attitude of yeah, disregard a towards change. Right. Or disregard towards myself where I'm forcing. Where I'm trying to do something that is in unitive for me. Because I think that's what I want to do. It's like rather than knowing that's what I want to do. And that's a big difference there because the Yeah, but to knowing when I say in my answer uh, a small percentage of, n of n knowledge. You uh -huh. know? A small percentage of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. or yeah. A small or big given by your experience. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. It's something you, you can't deny that uh -huh. part. You, right. Know? Right. you can go empty at all. You know? so, so, right. so there's something give you a kind of direction. Mm -hmm. It's your experience, I think. But without, like you're saying, and I had mentioned, you know, a non-ego directed presence. So, and you also said, you know, without illusions or compulsions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have this intention. Sure. But we need to work to leave all that other out of the way. Mm -hmm. Like, like you eat your eye, <clears throat> and, you know, like you said, you are. So that to me is like when you can put aside your ego that creates that emptiness that void, that you can then move forward without the compulsions, without the illusions, and so that you can try and maintain that steady direction. And for me, I thought of what is that register of when I have, when I begin to change or go in that direction. It was more like a peaceful or calmness. So that's, that's my register. Sure. You know, I, I made this change and it was tumultuous. You know, my direction, my anticipation of it was really tumultuous, but yet the register, when I have that intention, feels very different. It feels more calm, it feels peaceful, sure. it's just comfortable, more comfortable. And so when you're comfortable, you don't have to impose all this. Impulsion. Yeah, it's like you don't have to put posture, and you say, you don't posture, well, yeah, I, I know. I know. No, no, that's not the way to do it. I know how to do it. So, and that's that's the compulsion because we have this incredible body of knowledge. So it's very easy for us to posture. You know, I was given this gift. You know, you don't know what you're doing. So, it's, but that's not going to create any change whatsoever. So, how do you balance that? How do you get there? with the direction and intention, without all that baggage. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. 
the baggage gets in the way, that's yeah. for sure. Right. Okay, question number two. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read it? What would not be a profound and essential change, or what could be disguised as essential change? I kind of touched on it already. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, to me, it's, um, um, it's to follow um, a kind of provisory sense, you know, and I believe on this, even if it go well for some time, you know, mm -hmm. I believe in, in love and friendship and mm -hmm. money, whatever, mm -hmm. and does go well for, I don't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> a mm -hmm. right. time. Then I believe, you know, right. that to me it seems like um, um, essential chain disguise, 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 right? Uh -huh. Essential chain, right? Because you're in love and everything's wonderful. I can be kind. I can sure. tolerate. I can be all these wonderful things. So no suffering, nothing. Right. Everything goes well. So this well. is a change. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Until it. Until it breaks. <laughs> That. <laughs> right, right, mm. right. So in, in, it's a kind of illusion that happens. Yeah, with love, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. so like any kind. Of yeah. Things, no. Uh huh. So we're under a spell. Mm -hmm. We're under magic. Uh, exactly. And, then, and we know from our own experience that that that, that evaporates. One Some, day. It disappears somehow. It just evaporates, Sooner or later. right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, that oh, wasn't change. Yeah. <laughs> Such a change. Oops, I'm right back where I started from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I know. I I know. Mm -hmm. So I had this idea that um, it had to do with. The disguise had to do with the idea that someone up there knows. Someone knows what essential change is, and if I follow them mm. and do it, what they do, just that I will achieve it. That I'll achieve essential change because that's what I perceive. I perceive them as having essential change, and I need to mm -hmm. just. Do what, you know, go after them, go dedicate my life to them. Like following a guru or something. Like following a guru or following just yeah. the whole idea mm -hmm. of that it's outside me. Right. That's the thing, that's the illusion, that's the problem, that's where I see the disguise. That everything I need to know, they can tell me. It's a belief that the answers are out there. And that's the that's the problem because that in our experience, my experience, what little there is of it has to be has been that the change happens in me and in the way I act in the world. If I, and if it isn't like that. I create suffering for myself. I can see, I've had, <coughs> the thing is I've had more stronger registers in terms of make, doing it wrong than doing it right. I've had stronger registers of like mistreating my wife and having that be something that I couldn't let go of, that it was like so, it was so, it just made me feel terrible for the longest time. And it wasn't such a big deal, but it was a big deal because I was, I was um, not. Not only for yourself. I was not acting in unity, and I and the fact that I act that I mistreated her meant that even if she forgave me, I didn't forgive myself. There was something that stayed, and it took a long time to get rid of it. And when it, when that happened, it was like I was seeing, I could see 
there's a really clear register of of um, contradiction. Um, yeah, of contradiction and also of how I need to change. Sure. Because if I don't stop acting like this, I'm just going to keep creating problems for myself, and it's going to be it's going to hurt here. It's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt. I'm going to feel terrible. That's what I feel. Terrible. That's my synthesis. And I don't want to feel terrible. Yeah, so my, my understanding of disguise, in my experience, is that I, I do all reading and I listen to all these wonderful things and I say, I'm going to change. So, okay, so I read, kind of like what you know, you're saying also about following the guru. So you follow this doctrine or something like that and say, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be tolerant. I'm not going to judge. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to let go. So I, I do that. But then there's this shadow of like resentment. And just. Yeah, it's a farm. Yes, exactly. So it's, you know, I'm not, and then all of a sudden I think I'm accepting and then I go say, and I start gossiping or I say something mean about that person. And, and, and again, it leaves that right. It's like, oh, I really haven't, I think I've changed because of my actions. So mm -hmm. I know, well, if I change my actions, then if I repeat good unit of actions, then I've changed. Well, no, it's, you have to go much deeper Indeed. into that. Sure. So that to me is the disguise, like I, I think I've changed. And I can, people say, oh, you're so nice. You're so, well, what you're change. not upset over that? Oh, no, 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 that's because blah, blah, blah. And then I go home, I'm like, oh. And the answer, right now. And then it, ex <laughs> and then it explodes in an inappropriate place. Sure. So and that's, that's. So that is as a form of external change. Right. And then you believe in it, which really kicks you, you know, you, you really believe you've changed. You know, it's like believing in love, which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. But it has, you know, it has to be in its place. Yes, it does change for that moment, but there's much more profound experience in that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good. This is working. This is working because I'm talking beyond the, the notes. The, the note, the posture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me. So. Good that both of you are helping me. Well, that was so interesting because in some of the other questions, I'm starting to write, and I was writing, I was just repeating what I've read in the internal look or something like that, and I and I had that register of, no, 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 this is not, <laughs> no, you're, I didn't use the word posturing, but it's like, it's like I'm, I'm copying your notes and pretending they're mine, because I don't have the internal, the physical register of truth. Yes, this is wonderful. Yes, this is how I would like to feel, but it's truly not my, mm -hmm. my, my words. You know, it hasn't been my real experience. It's kind of like out there still. You know, so it's very interesting. You said the same thing. I said, so I had to stop. I had to stop writing and say, just relax. Yeah. And I said, it's easy. Yeah. And what, and what are you feeling? So it was very, very interesting. Okay, so number three, what do I understand or intuit by a change of mental conditions? Change of mental conditions, which is... No, I don't, you don't have to read the okay. foot again. Okay, I was going to read the whole book. Okay. So when I get the sense that what has been moving me uh, doesn't really feel important, okay, it's like sometimes I've gotten the register where I really believe, oh, this is really important, I really need to do this, and, but then there's something back here that says, mm, no, it's, it's like you're just filling up space, it's like I have to run home and I have to do my routine, I have my routine, I do this, I do that, I do this, it's like if I don't do that, <gasps> You know, it's so then. You know, you have to sit back and say, well, what, what, what's real? What's important here? And uh, I also said, um, when I can sit back and and see that what I'm doing is really I directed, ego directed, 
and uh, and I've started to get a, a pretty strong register now. I can determine when it's eye directed or it's I haven't had too many experiences of essential yet, but I'm starting to recognize what's not essential, which for me is the first step. I have to know what's not, you know, primitive. Mm -hmm. So, so it's yeah, and then I think the change happens when you when I would get that in, I don't know, kind of an internal register of necessity or importance. It's a deep that deeper sense of what really is important, um, and and for me it's it has been a more quiet uh, perception where the eye driven mental you know direction is more frenetic. It's you know it's more. Oh, what gotta do, what gotta do, you know, it's more anxious. Capatic. Yeah, right. So you have all those emo emotions around it. So for me, the change in the, sorry, the mental condition would be that it's much more quiet and it just it has a different physical register. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, that was good about the phonetic, because mm -hmm. I, I agree with that register. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everything is very frantic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, out of control. Right. Well, it's so important. I have to do it. I have to do it no matter what. So you can't even stop and think. Wait a minute. Is this really? Do I really have to do this? Is this really important? Is this really going to change my life? Okay, we're reverse order, so so I'm next. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, um, is um, what you no, 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 go, no, go, 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 <clears throat> um, um, you know, go, go, the go, 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 the chain, you know, always mm. the, the this mechanic circuit, you know, a steam, a steam answer, uh -huh. you know, steam if I, answer, yeah. uh -huh. this mechanic circuit, right. uh -huh. if I don't arrive to, to break it, you know, so I think the, the, the um, what I understand to, to change is a right to handle this, uh, you know, break down mm -hmm. this situation. Uh -huh. you know? To see without illusion again, mm -hmm. this mechanism always are operating in my consciousness, you know, in my mental condition. So if I right to, 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 to move something with intentionality, then I may approach myself to do check real changes with intentionality. Yeah, because this mechanism always will be there, you know, even if I see it or if I don't see it. Right. You know, the difference I believe or I don't believe, you know. So, mm -hmm. how to, to break down this. Maybe I'm not going to break the mechanism, but I, if I see it, you know, I think it, this is start the change. Mm -hmm. At that point, the start the change. Yeah, yeah. observe. Right. Yeah. 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 No, there's, mm -hmm. that's a very odd thing, right? That, uh, that the, being able to witness what, what's going on yeah. is three quarters of the way home. Sure, to, to break that magic mm -hmm. thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh -huh. even if the result, the external result are good, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, it's mm -hmm. not trap. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, a, yeah, right, it's a trap. Right? It's mm -hmm. a trap, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I right to surpass this uh, magic thing right. involved in me, you know, uh -huh. mm -hmm. then I can start making the change. Mm -hmm. And you see that happening every minute or in certain situations or um, 
In other words, how do you frame it? Is it something that if you're not doing it every minute of your life, it's not happening? Or does it have to do with particular situations? Well, I think, uh, how I said before, the mechanism is always there. Always. Uh -huh. Always. So, in the important situation for, for my life, I can see it better, I think. Mm -hmm. If the, the thing goes well, maybe I can sleep for a moment, you know, take a rest, <laughs> but uh, something wrong, I can see it better, you know. Uh -huh. That's uh, the, does um, make the difference, what is important or, or uh -huh. not, in the relationship with approach people, my family, my mother, my son, you know. Yeah, we were talking about that before you and I, about, uh, yeah. about the, in, the intimate relationships exactly. and how they push towards repetitions. Right? That the repetitions are what come up first. That's what sure, we were talking sure. about, the stimulus response in that sense. Exactly, right? exactly. So then getting beyond the repetition of the relationship, getting beyond almost, you could say, like the emotional problematic, the emotional conundrum, the, mm -hmm. the, which weighs on the relationship. It's like I anticipate what she's going to be like, my mother, mm -hmm. and sure enough, right? That's what she's like. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not enough. That's not enough, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's not me changing. That's just me projecting. So there's no reflection there. There's no, it's still, or there's a little bit of reflection, but it's kind of a kind of reflection that isn't. There's no intentionality behind it. Mm -hmm. There's no intentionality changing. That's what you were saying before. Mm -hmm about how there has to be that intentionality, right? Yeah. There has to almost be co-present. Exactly. Magic, the yeah. apperception, reversibility, uh -huh. all those uh, stuff, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Or inner look. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. In Something room. else. Something else. Mm. Um, so I was looking at a change in mental direction. Let's see that that what I need to change requires internal unity, and that unity is completely dependent on how I treat the people around me, my loved ones, my friends, my neighbors, and my acquaintances. That is how I act, feel, and think in the same direction, and how I gain unity, which allows me to go deeper inside myself with an open hand. Instead of looking out for myself, seeing others with suspicion, I see them as arbiters of good intentions. 